good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Serna J and I would be your moderator for today. Today's webinar is in collaboration with Melanie Flores from the Hackett Group and she will be speaking on expanding supplier management capabilities. Before we start, a few housekeeping tips for you. At any point of time, you may send us your questions in the Q&A box and they will be addressed towards the end of the webinar. Good afternoon, everybody. I think we are having a problem with our slides, so if you give us a second, we are going to uh, get that sorted out. Sharna, probably if you want to um, just uh, talk about um, Zycus. Yes, sure. Um, so introducing Zycus, as you may know, Zycus is a leading global provider of complete source-to-pay suite of procurement performance solutions. Our comprehensive product portfolio includes applications for both strategic and the operational aspects of procurement. Since 2013, Zycus has been a part of the leader's quadrant in the Gartner's Magic Quadrant for strategic sourcing application suits and has been positioned the highest for our ability to execute. I will now wait for Melanie to uh, have the slides up and start with the webinar. Okay, thank you, Sharna, and thank you, everybody. I'm struggling a little bit with the slides, so if you give me a second, um, I'm going to be able to share the slides. I saw somebody um, asking uh, whether um, that they were not able to hear, so I hope that has been um, sorted out. And in a second, I'm going to be joining, uh, showing you um, uh, the um, slides. Okay, so give me a second. I hope all of you can see the um, slides now. And um, let me uh, introduce myself and thank you everybody for, um, uh, thank you Cycles for inviting me to this webinar and to share some of the information that we have uh, been doing analysis on um, in the in the last years around supply management. Um, let me take you very briefly um, about um, the Hackett Group. Um, we are an advisory organization, and we are um, uh, we have um, as well a lot of uh, work that we have done in terms of defining work class and uh, making analysis in terms of what the most advanced organizations are doing in this area. So our um, solution portfolio, and I'm not going to take you through a lot of these, but uh, pretty much we, uh, as, as the Hackett Group, have started doing a benchmarking for many years. We define what world-class procurement is, uh, but we also help organizations um, closing some of the gaps once they understand um, how they compare to other organizations or to top performers or world-class organizations, and therefore we help them throughout consulting and also through um, our advisory uh, services. So, uh, you know, I think that's uh, uh, pretty much it. Let me just uh, get uh, into the details of, of our uh, focus today, which is supplier management. And let me start with the definition in terms of what is supplier relationship management and, and what is the focus that I'm going to be talking about today. And I think this is important because at many organizations, there is a not necessarily a consensus in terms of what supplier management, supplier relationship management is. And therefore, uh, I'm really trying to, um, you know, set the scene in, in, in terms of defining what supplier relationship management is. And I think you know, we have a very simple definition. Um, is really the proactive and coordinated management of suppliers. And, and this, is, this is challenging. Um, in particular, the, the coordinated management of suppliers. But in principle, it's, it's about proactive and coordinated management and in order to achieve a number of things. Clearly, to improve the performance of suppliers in case that is required and to mitigate any type of risk, 
um, from the relationships and also from the different uh, situations that you might find yourself or your suppliers in. And, and also to enable internal business processes, for example, and in particular many organizations are looking for innovation. So this is also an important, important part in enabling those internal business processes with supplier capabilities. So as you can see, very broad definition, but still I wanted to make sure that we are talking about the same. Uh, we are not specifically talking about supplier relationship management as one of the aspects, and they have many different aspects. Um, the challenges that we have seen, and, and uh, probably some of you have faced this, is that supplier management um, is really in the middle of a number of areas uh, within, within the procurement function, but also across the company. There are many parties that are playing a role in there, and therefore we hear uh, and we see a lot of um, um, you know, discussions and work around supplier management. You can think about uh, the onboarding piece, uh, which is more on the operational side, uh, a lot of the, the transactional P2P, potentially um, people are doing um, activities in this area. But if you think about risk management, um, there might be some uh, people in the supply uh, chain and that are very uh, keen understanding the risk management. So it has to do also uh, with suppliers. Um, clearly, the category managers, uh, because of the, the, the contract management, the good execution and delivery of the supplier, um, the delivery of the, the agreements with suppliers. And there's a lot of information around suppliers that are an, all over the place, um, even at the company level. So SRM and managing suppliers is, is not necessarily a, a niche thing, and, and, and probably some of you have faced this already. Um, so SRM requires a set of principles, processes, and tools that enable organizations, in, which might, you know, in this complex environment, to manage those uh, suppliers and the ongo on, on an ongoing operations during the life cycle of, of a supplier. Um, so it's not at a certain point uh, exclusively, you know, the con after the contract phase or before the contract or while you are trying to get them, for example, to innovate. So it, it really requires a set of processes and, and tools that can um, help in managing this. Now, um, the, the slide that I'm showing you is just um, a selection of, of some of the elements that we have been gathering in, in a particular study that we ran end of last year. There's what are the most important um, capabilities that procurement functions are trying to develop or further develop in their own companies. And um, in this selection, I, I just included the ones that require an improvement opportunity. This graph, you can read it in, in this way. We place um, a number of capabilities that procurement executives are telling us these are important for us. We need to be focusing or continue focusing on those in 2016. And then we rate them in terms of importance for them. Um, and this is the X um, uh, in importance of the metrics. And in the Y axis, we have the ability to address them, either low or to moderate, in some cases high. And you, you see the, the yellow and the red points. So fortunately, there are a couple of red points. But supplier relationship management in managing suppliers and those relationships um, is right in the middle of the, the red dots. Uh, next, uh, together with talent management, which um, you might be uh, uh, seeing this as well in the environment, talent management is, is also an important and, and uh, complex uh, topic uh, for, for procurement functions. But really supplier relationship management is in there. And if you think about the number of years that procurement functions have been addressing supplier management or have been doing projects in this area, it's already quite some number of years. But unfortunately, not many organizations have been um, taking a more comprehensive approach of managing, um, understanding who the right suppliers are and in managing um, the, the relationships um, with them according to the objectives as well as, as they have. And because of the nature of the, the management of the suppliers or the, the 
you know, the links that are in all the, those different activities um, makes it a, as well a, a complex exercise. Now, why organizations still want to do this? And there are many reasons, and, and I'm not going to go into the details of those, but there is a good business case behind managing suppliers. And in some cases, difficult to um, calculate, if you will, um, for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is that there is no much um, structure and, and rigor in, in tracking and measuring uh, value delivered by managing suppliers. But this is the, what you are looking at is an analysis that we did a couple of years back. And uh, we asked organizations what we call them supplier relationship uh, top performers and are those organizations that are really good in, in particular in that area in supplier relationship management. And we look at the, we, we asked for the monetary value delivered from SRM versus the, the typical sourcing activity. And you see the results from today and the expectation that they have in three years um, uh, from from that point in time when, when we uh, raised, you know, when we did this analysis. And um, a, a couple of interesting points in here. I think most probably the, the most interesting one is the fact that organizations are saying, actually what we see, and this is the uh, really advanced organizations, is that the the savings that we are going to get from sourcing, the traditional sourcing, are limited. And we, we expect to see uh, this um, being more challenging and therefore might come uh, to a lower level than what it was in the past. Uh, at the same time, what they are saying um, is, well, actually, we, are, um, uh, we see that the benefits coming from supplier management are going to uh, increase, and it's because of the management of the suppliers. Now, let me put this in context, and first of all, because of our background in, in, in terms of benchmarking, we know what the t typical savings are for organizations, and, and this is actually a little bit high than what we see um, across uh, procurement functions, industries, um, maturity levels, etc. Um, having said that, we still recognize that making analysis of the savings over time, we see that organizations, particularly the most advanced ones, are uh, going down in terms of the, the, the uh, cost savings, um, cost reduction savings that they can achieve um, because, you know, our organizations are um, more mature and they are tackling and addressing professionally a different spend categories is more difficult, you know, year and year get the same level of savings. So as organizations mature, and there are some other areas that they need to get uh, to find some value. Now, another important point to, uh, to be said in this slide is that supplier relationship management it is not typically, and depending on how you define the, the value delivered from this, and not necessarily is a very different bucket than the entire category management, the entire savings that you have been um, delivering. So depending on your um, results and then also in your calculation on savings, this might be a component of it. So I, from a number of companies that I've been working with, in some cases um, there is a, a misinterpretation that because we are now doing an SRM program and we are managing better our suppliers, we're going to get an incredible high on top um, savings um, on top of what we typically reported. This is not necessarily true, and, and I really recommend to be careful on that, really understanding where the savings are coming from, uh, because definitely it's an area where, is, if you will, is the next area of value that we can deliver. Um, having said that, we need to be careful in understanding you know, the calculations about it and how we communicate this. In any case, what we, the, the results of our uh, study uh, when, when we did this analysis is that the return on investment was really high. We were also asking for a number of people dedicated of managing suppliers and doing this SRM type of activities. And definitely for all organizations, the top performers in SRM and the other ones, there was an important return on investment. So it was clear that um, 
it was it was worth to invest in in this area. Now, um, the the focus of today is uh, look at some of the best practices that uh, proved to be really valuable in in managing the suppliers and managing the relationships and getting value out of that. And for each of them, probably we could spend a day. Um, or definitely an hour talking about that. Um, but still, I wanted to give you an overview. Some of the some of the key best practices. There are more, um, but I think um, if we go through these ones, it, it, it is already a very good exercise. And let me start with the first one, which is about segmentation of suppliers. Um, probably this. Uh, probably everybody in procurement has uh, done this now. Unfortunately, is you know the, the box as such is not important, and, and actually the way to you execute this is is where it comes, where it really makes a difference. Having a clear supplier segmentation and definition of the relationship that you want from that supplier is very important, and from that, what is the strategy that you are going to have in managing that um, relationship and managing that. Supplier. So there, there are very different ways in how to segment uh, or stratify suppliers. Probably the, the traditional one nowadays is, is not clearly the not, not the most advanced. It's not the, the widely used in, in particular for more advanced organizations. It's just to look at how much money uh, or the, the spend that each of those um, uh, suppliers are are making from. Um, you know, with with the organization, definitely that that is a, is one of the criteria. But there are many other criteria. So having this is a really good uh, way to start looking at that supplier segmentation that you have done, and understand whether there are, there are other elements that you need to be considering, um, and probably refreshing that segmentation segmentation criteria uh, in in order to understand who the suppliers are. And from that, what is the type of relationship that you want to have, that they want to have with you, and what is the strategy that you are going to go about that? This, this is fundamental. Um, unfortunately, many companies say, well, we have done this. This is not new for us. Uh, again, the, the, the important bit is to understand, for example, what type of criteria you, you are looking at, how often you are uh, refreshing this, um, etc. Definitely uh, one of the important best practices when it comes to managing um, suppliers and, and the relationship. Another important one also brought is about the process and the governance. So having formal processes and, and a way to a, a governance model for managing those relationships. Because of the nature of supplier management, as we were saying, Main, there are many touching points across the entire enterprise with suppliers. Um, you know, it might be the accounts payable uh, people or the purchasing operations, um, the contract owners or the, the requesters. Um, there might be clearly the category managers. You might have already a supplier manager role for some of those key suppliers, um, et cetera, et cetera. So there are so many, so many points. That is, in, in the research that we have done, we have seen that also talking with suppliers, we hear over and over the comment, you know, it's very difficult to understand how uh, we should um, <clears throat> work with this particular organization because we have so many faces. Um, for us, it's just not one customer. And, and to be honest, if you can imagine suppliers in the sales, Bit of, of our suppliers are well organized and understand um, what they want from us, and, and potentially they might even certainly suffer from that, but to a certain extent also take advantage of it. So having a clear governance model, who's doing what, who's responsible for that, what is the ratio behind managing suppliers from all those bit throughout the life cycle is clear and important practice. Uh, skills and knowledge, uh, this comes back to the point that I was making in terms of talent, and talent it is uh, an important topic uh, for, for the entire procurement function. But skills and knowledge upgrade is important. What are the type of skills that we are going to require uh, for managing suppliers? And there are many different roles on managing suppliers. So we, we don't only need 
um, clearly we don't only need the, the you know, all good negotiator type of skills, but we also not necessarily only need the, um, you know, the, the outspoken and uh, relationship type of person. We require a combination of skills, and we also need from that segmentation to understand what type of activities we are going to require. Do we need to have more technical people but with experience in project management, for example? Uh, definitely soft skills are important, but we also require for that particular relationship, um, you know, detail and knowledge and experience in a particular field. So, so skills and knowledge is important, and just to assume that our people is going to have that is, is not really optimal. Um, if you have a program, you need to look at what are the type of skills and knowledge that are required also considering the type of roles that they have, you know, coming back to the governance and the process, but also the strategies that you are going to put together for these different um, segments or, or uh, classes, if you will, of suppliers. Another one, uh, performance management. Performance management is part of the, the equation in, in supplier management and supplier relationship management. Is, is one of the key elements that enables a number of things, and I'm going to be focusing in this one um, for the rest of the presentation, but having a formal and, uh, process for that and mutually agreed with suppliers around, with suppliers and with key internal stakeholders, the key internal customers, is very important. Uh, it is, is at the center of, of uh, what is going to enable you in a number of areas around supplier management. I'm not going to go deeper right now because it's, it's part of uh, some of the, the slides that I'm going to be um, showing you um, later on. Uh, supplier development. Uh, this, is, this is also important. Uh, some suppliers, because of different reasons, require development. So it's important to have a, a formal program for how you're going to develop suppliers, what type of suppliers. If you see, it's all coming back to the strategy that you have for those suppliers. But there are some things required for the developing suppliers. Also, an investment is required. So your organization needs to understand what type of investment and how far um, they are going to go with what type of suppliers in terms of developing them. And there are some very good case studies in terms of developing suppliers and a lot of bad uh, cases and, and how some of those things um, have not worked properly. It can be very beneficial, can be very successful. It's important to, to have a formal program and make some good thoughts when you are going to go about um, developing some of suppliers and also what the purpose of, of that is. Sorry. And the last one um, is, uh, that I have in this list is about system support. There are some system capabilities that are important to have in order to support the entire process. Um, efficiency is also important. You, you look at the ROI that I was talking about before in, in the in analysis that we did, and this ROI also has to do with what is the cost of doing all those great things that are going to bring value. And nowadays in the procurement function, and well, nowadays is probably is not that fair. You know, in the number of years we have been under pressure to deliver more and to do more um, for the business uh, with, you know, the, the the number of people that we have, uh, with the budget that we have, or uh, if it's uh, better with less. And actually, those are good news for procurement, but still it's important to make sure that. Some of these activities are not, uh, you, know, you, you, you can make them scalable, uh, but it's also in an efficient way. And technology is one of the areas that can support this. Now, if you ask me if SRM is about the system support and the tools that are behind, clearly not. It's, again, an enabler, but uh, in the days where efficiency is so important and it might be um, an important way of, um, uh, you know, making sure that your program is also successful. Okay, so as I said, let me look at performance management a little bit more 
in detail. And the reason, sorry, let me just go back for a second to this slide. And the reason why I'm, I'm going into this area, as I said, we could spend one hour or even more in each of those practices and, and, and others, uh, but we have made an analysis in terms of, from a capability point of view, what are the areas where companies struggle more in their programs? And performance management, it comes very, very often as, you know, how, you, how we're measuring supplier performance, what are we doing with these uh, metrics and with this information, how we go about gathering data and developing metrics, et cetera. So that, that's why I'm, I'm taking this um, in a, a closer look at, at this area. And um, in a supplier performance management or SPM, very important point, it's part of the enterprise performance management, it's part of the procurement performance management, it's part of the entire performance management of an organization. So let me explain this, um, uh, this uh, picture, which is actually a simplified scheme of the entire procurement performance management. Uh, but if you see in the left-hand side the business planning, so this is really the company, and there is a, a budgeting planning um, exercise. Uh, the, the business is, is, is doing some planning in terms of what is what they need to achieve, what are the different activities and projects they might have, and a procurement also needs to do this and for its own area, but also work very closely with the business in, in that planning uh, stage um, and replanning if, if this is required. So if you look at in the right-hand side, the, the uh, blue and green blocks, is pretty much a, a core component of what would be the performance management around the spend. So it's about the category, uh, spend categories that you have. So the, this is the blue piece. You need to make a plan of um, the spend categories, uh, the planning and improvement that you are going to be doing around that. Clearly, pretty much in line with the internal stakeholders and with the business planning. And then you're going to have your spend category performance measurement piece. That is tracking your savings, identifying um, and collecting all that information in order that you are able to report the performance in that particular area. And I'm talking about savings, which is the most um, uh, uh, used, but there are many other areas of value that nowadays advanced category management um, uh, activity is looking into not only the, the cost reduction savings. Uh, but this is something that you, you would do that. Now, if you look at the green part, which is around the supplier performance measurement, uh, this is obviously not in a vacuum. It, it is part of the entire performance management and procurement, and, and in particular with the spend and management. So you have to do the supplier performance planning and improvement, the entire planning of what you're going to be doing, and then the, the performance measurement as such. And then you're going to have a cross-category supplier management activities. Uh, clearly, this depends on your supplier base what type of suppliers you have, whether this is more or less relevant, but in principle you would have a layer of like the cross-category supplier management. And the orange bit is really about the other type of uh, performance um, metrics that you are going to be looking at for a procurement function, kind of the process excellence, the talent, um, you know, some system improvements, uh, some uh, other uh, P2P activity potentially, etc. So the point is that supplier performance measurement is not an isolated component that let us start doing, looking at performance management. It is a, a core component of the entire procurement performance management and as such needs to be linked in those interfaces, oh, sorry, by the way, the errors you know, the, you, you exchange information in terms of what are the targets, what are the actuals um, over time, uh, you know, to, to understand if you're achieving um, the, the objectives and the targets defined. So SPM is an integral component of the other performance management and activities that the procurement function is doing. Now, uh, this, uh, this is really fundamental, and having a clear link um, from the corporate scorecard to the supplier scorecard, uh, having this strategic and operational link between what is what we are trying to achieve, 
from a corporate, from, a, from an enterprise point of view, and some of those scorecards and some of those metrics that we're going to have for what is procurement enabling uh, from, from a procurement standpoint, from a supply point of view, and this having the link to the supplier scorecard. So what type of things I'm going to be including in my supplier scorecard, this might depend obviously on the type of supplier, coming back again to this segmentation of suppliers, um, but also about what we are trying to achieve. And this, links, this link needs to be in there to ensure that you are driving behaviors. Remember that scorecards are also meant to um, you know, bring the attention um, and drive behaviors and results. So it's important to have this particular link. Now, let me go to, to design and, and use of scorecards. Since scorecards are really there to track and report performance against uh, some of the metrics and KPIs, I make the difference between key performance indicators and other metrics that you might have that are important and as well to consider. Um, now, when it comes to supplier uh, scorecards and supplier performance management, um, I, I just highlighted four um, important points um, that are really relevant to, to discuss. Uh, the first one is about measure supplier and the company performance over time. So some of those trends are important and understand how this has been developed. It's not, in, it's not only one time off, it might be in the case of some suppliers, but it's important to understand how this is evolving, also linked to the other activities that you might be conducting. Um, the second point is about establish a common language and a framework for performance of the suppliers. So uh, definitely you may want to uh, look at those metrics and ensure that it's clear. I remember one of the points that I was making before in terms of clarity uh, and, and uh, mutually agreed a framework of um, understanding, assessing performance, <clears throat> sorry, and managing that. So uh, the scorecards and the metrics that you're going to include are very important also in terms of the language and the framework for those communications with your suppliers, uh, but also with your internal um, stakeholders and internal customers. Uh, it's important to understand what type of things we're going to be measuring. I don't know if you have uh, seen this in the past, if, 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 you have, um, if you have been in a similar situation, but there are many organizations that I've talked to uh, and, and you know, there is a, uh, several times comes the point saying, well, actually we have some performance metrics in place and we think everything is working. In principle, fine, suppliers are delivering as, as we agree, but we, we talk with the, with the, the, you know, the people at the company, the requesters, the ones that are the users of the service, the ones that are talking to the supplier, there is a mismatch. Um, and it's because probably some, some of them are just perceptions and some others, is, it, there are some true issues that we have not included. So uh, these scorecards, as I was saying, is, is also about that common language and framework that allows you to understand externally but also internally and the performance of those suppliers. The third point is also very important um, and to a certain extent is uh, some of the things that I've seen um, uh, more, you know, one of, one of the issues that I've seen that companies find more difficult. Um, Probably because of our heritage and benchmarking, we work a lot with metrics and benchmarks and the entire process of how to come to good metrics, which is not uh, a, a necessarily a, you know, a given exercise. You need to, to, to work on it. But the, the point number three is about uh, the different complexity, metric selection, and potentially the frequency that you're going to be looking at some of those metrics by suppliers. Unfortunately, we would love to have the top 10, you know, like always I get the question, what is the top 10 metrics, KPIs, that you're going to have for each procurement function, but similar for each supplier? 
Well, unfortunately, if you want to do this properly, you're going to have to face the fact that um, you most probably are going to have a supplier index type of metric uh, that is looking at some of the more operational performance uh, things that, that, that you have in place for the majority of your suppliers, if you will. Uh, but you are going to, particularly depending on the strategy that you're going to have, you need to be more complex and more, uh, not necessarily more complex, more sophisticated, that's the correct word, sophisticated because the relationship might be more sophisticated. So this is important to, to understand and avoid just going, everybody trying to measure the same way. Uh, again, there are some index um, an index might, might help to a certain extent, but going beyond that and going beyond uh, the relationship for some suppliers might not work. And the last one um, can be created through an SPM tool. I, I already mentioned this, the, the, the ability to, um, you know, reduce effort in your end um, in doing some of those activities. Now, we have been asking organizations about the, the, how they use supplier scorecards. And what you are looking at are some of the um, results of, of our benchmarking activities. And what we see is a difference in how the, the supplier scorecards are used. We have world class, which is top quartile in efficiency and in effectiveness, and PS is really the, the median of the rest of the organizations, which are not world class. So it's, both groups are cross industry, just if you are trying to think about where would you be. Um, but what you can see is that the majority uh, of the workers' organizations, this is real data, so unfortunately I cannot tell you what all workers' companies are doing in exactly the same way, but 63% uh, of those uh, companies in the workers' group actually are doing um, scorecards for strategic suppliers only. Um, and they are going in 25% on top for strategic and non-strategic, a subset of the non-strategic. The peers, they are not um, uh, doing it, um, or they are doing it, uh, they are trying to go with all suppliers, still, you know, similar proportion in only strategic and, and um, strategic and non-strategic suppliers. Now, there are also some, uh, some important things to consider here. Uh, World class organizations have less suppliers than the peers. If you look at those two groups, workers organizations have much less uh, suppliers, which uh, facilitate and, and make the entire process easier. Um, now, if you have the technology um, already there, this might help you to extend to a, num a higher number of suppliers in terms of the type of things that you are doing, which would be very beneficial. But probably to only to a certain extent. The point in particular is strategic suppliers probably are those that you want to um, have in a closer look, uh, understanding better what type of performance they are delivering. And if you think about that, this comes back again to the, stra uh, to the stratification of the segmentation of your suppliers. What do you mean by a strategic supplier might be as well important and in, in that definition. But in principle, Although um, supplier performance um, is an important point in the performance management of that, not every organization is having a different approach. Um, the most advanced are going for, let us look at the strategic um, first. Now, what is the process? And um, I, I don't think in these specific boxes you will find something absolutely different from, from what you are doing. Um, I hope we are giving you some some good ideas in terms of potentially something that you have missed. Uh, but the important is not the box again, it is how you execute each of what is inside of those boxes. And the supplier performance process, management process, is, is one initial setup and the ongoing process. And the initial setup is about defining the metrics. And um, defining the metrics is, is important. There are, important rules in how to select some of those uh, metrics. Um, you know, having way too many metrics is not going to be useful. I think it, 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 all, all the good 
um, practices around picking and selecting the right metrics apply the same way here. Um, what is what you are trying to achieve and what is what is important for that particular class or segment of suppliers or a particular supplier is important. Establishing performance targets, which is is different than the metrics, so we need to understand what is the metric because what is important for us, what is going to be the target. The, the target setting is again a different process. Many organizations are coming to us because we have um, benchmarks that we can help them with. And to a certain extent, definitely it's, it's important to look at if you have available external benchmarks, but for some of those suppliers, most probably the targets are going to come from your own experience and for, from your own records and from working with your internal stakeholders to define what are the targets that you really require to have. So important to work on that. Define service level agreements that you may want to have. Um, very important, most organizations are doing this, so I don't think I need to go into the details of that. And the last point, build tools to capture and report performance data. Uh, data. And it is important. Probably the information might be in more than one system. They are not in systems. They are in the heads of different people, internal customers around the company. So it is important when you are doing the initial setup to consider this um, and, and look at the tools that you are going to have um, in order to report but also to capture and be wise in selecting metrics um, and selecting what that type of process you are going to put in place. And the idea of a, a management process that is really used for management. If it takes too long, if it's too complicated, um, you might want to still keep that particular metric in the list uh, because this is going to ensure that you over time uh, build something that you are able to report, to measure, to try to capture on that, but be wise in, in, in that as well. And the ongoing process, straightforward, capture and track performance data, report supplier performance, identify escalating resolve issues, if, if any. Um, um, it, it is important to, the, the structure behind that, so how you are going to escalate, how you are going to resolve issues, and if you remember some of the the comments that I was making before in terms of uh, what are the type of um, uh, skills, what is the race, who's doing what. It is important to have this well defined and communicated as well to suppliers and internal customers. So that is a formal process on how to go about that. So it's very important. Uh, some of the programs that I've seen struggle a lot because this piece was not necessarily well defined. And, and then, then you have the, the data, but what are we doing with it? Um, well, having data is, is, is just, it takes a lot, but once you have it, you should use it to manage it, uh, to manage the process rather just to have it. Nice to have is, is probably too expensive to do all this. Enforce penalties and deliver rewards. Deliver rewards is important. Uh, consider doing this if you are doing a process. Obviously, there is a piece there is what it was agreed, it is in our contract, suppliers need to deliver, but there are some other things that might potentially be important and you might want to consider into um, a reward uh, program, for example. And the last point, something that you need to, to keep it in there, uh, regular reviews, uh, sorry, regular review, the metrics, the targets, the tools that you have put in place. Most probably the first, when you launch some of these or what you already have in place needs to be adapted. And this has also something to do with the nature of that, the nature of supplier management and the, and the link that I was talking between what are you trying to achieve as a company, what are trying to achieve as a procurement function, and what you're going to be, uh, what you want from your suppliers. So in the more basic type of things, you know, the, the operational performance, the quality, the, responsiveness, all those type of things that need to be in there that are actually in your contract, this should happen. But as things change over time, and you might require something different from your supplier, the relationship might change, so you need to be having a process in place that looks at addressing this as well over time. Now, 
I'm, I'm coming to developing suppliers and I'm not going to go deeper in, in this area, but typically, just let me go back one slide, once you, are, once you have this ongoing process, you might identify that there are some issues that you need to uh, resolve and there is some development that potentially needs to happen. So because of that being, I just wanted to, to take you through a little bit of, of developing suppliers, which again is, is one of the key best practices as such, and we can spend one hour and, and potentially more on this one. Um, what are the typical objectives? And, and let, me, let me say a couple of words on why I'm talking about the, the objectives and why it's important to talk about the objectives. It's because it's going to drive what type of program you're going to put in place. So typically it's about improving capabilities, so you identify some issues in terms of the capabilities, you want to improve the capabilities or the service of the suppliers uh, in order to increase the value that they are delivering to your company. Uh, so this is typically one of the, the objectives. That there might be other type of object, objectives, such as align the, the capabilities of your suppliers for the, to the business requirements of today and also in the future. So if you think about developing suppliers and the type of programs that you are going to put in place, those two objectives not necessarily are the same type of um, things that you are going to include in those programs. So what are the objectives that you have for, for, for the programs is important. Uh, clearly, team with suppliers to achieve a number of things and, and uh, picking cost reduction targets and service level objectives. Uh, team with suppliers, you not necessarily are going to team with every single supplier coming back to the to the segmentation, but this might uh, be important. We did an analysis in terms of some of the things that suppliers value the most, and one of the things is about this uh, teaming with them that they feel that they are working with you. So depending, obviously, in the type of uh, relationship that you want to build, this might be very important as an objective. Collaborate with those suppliers. Um, continuous improvement or a particular uh, step change performance uh, that you require them to be. For some of those organizations that have to, the, the supplier base or for spend uh, categories that the supplier base is quite reduced, um, it's very nice when we talk about risk management, about you know, doing some other things, have a different suppliers as one of the mitigation strategies. But the, in some cases you have a supplier base that there are three or four suppliers, um, and unfortunately you need to be working with them, but potentially your competitors are working with others. And you need to develop them uh, probably for the future, and you require them to make a step change in performance. So again, different type of format that you are going to build if, you are, if this is one of your objectives. Or encourage your suppliers to um, bring opportunities for new value creation, for innovation. Um, if that's the purpose, uh, there are some other mechanisms that you are going to uh, potentially put in place. Share intellectual capital uh, concepts with, uh, between your company and, and some of the suppliers that you are going to partner with. Clearly, we are talking about uh, not um, you know, more of the strategic uh, type of suppliers and gain uh, savings and, and efficiencies. And, and the last one is um, you know, design and implement frameworks and, and tools that uh, help some of the suppliers that you require potentially, you know, develop minority diversity suppliers or uh, suppliers in emerging markets. The requirements of those types, if that's the objective, are different than the other ones. So be clear uh, in terms of what type of objectives you are going to have and, and depending on the uh, the relationships and the suppliers and your segmentation, you're going to say, well, actually, I require two or three different types, uh, which is perfectly fine. We have different objectives. It's perfectly fine. But think about that while um, developing your programs. Um, now, I'll just uh, put a, a little bit of information in, in terms of those uh, development programs. and. Three main components, um, if you will, and, and I know that I'm making this a little more simplistic, but I think 
it's important to keep in mind three different areas. One is understand the development needs, and this is what I was talking about in terms of what are the goals, what are the objectives um, that you have, what type of benefits you expect from that particular development program. This is very important. So at the end of the day, you want to track that you're achieving uh, the, the, your objectives, your goals, and that you're generating some benefits. So it needs to be clear, and it's very important to be clear internally within procurement, with the internal stakeholders, but also to a certain extent with the suppliers. This needs, needs to be transparent uh, for you and clear for you. And uh, what are the challenges that you're going to have and what are the needs that you're going to um, try to solve through this particular program? Now, you're going to design a, a program based on that. You might have specific objectives and you, you might need to take some specific considerations depending on the supply market depending um, on, on a particular supplier relationship that you have, might be it is, is your uh, customer as well, but there might be potential some, some things that you need to put in consideration. You need to define the process of the program and the approach, and what are the techniques that you are going to use to develop the, um, the supplier. And the last point, the last box is about the infrastructure. So it needs to be, a, a, you need to develop an infrastructure if so development programs is going to be something that you are going to be using in a formal way, formal programs, depending on the, the relationships that you want to um, build, develop, uh, and improve performance. You need to develop an infrastructure for those uh, programs, which is about what are the roles, what are the responsibility, and that you are going to have, and what is the impact um, that is going to have uh, in, in, in terms of um, also the, the different parties that are um, taking place in this program. So again, we would, um, you know, for each of these boxes, we could go into the detail, but it's important once you understand what how your suppliers are performing. This is one of the main entrants for supplier development. There is another one, you have your own agenda, uh, potentially it might be risk management or a risk mitigation strategy that you might want to uh, do uh, supplier development programs and also uh, uh, very important um, to, to you know, uh, practice for uh, your supplier management programs. I have one last slide in, in terms of the closing remarks, and we're going to have time for a couple of questions. Um, SRM is increasing its role in terms of adding value and value creation, particularly if you're a more advanced organization, but in general for every single procurement function. And there is, a, there is a, an important value that can be created out of that. It might be in innovation, it might be in risk mitigation, um, et cetera. Um, SRM effectiveness, uh, when, when I talked about the effectiveness, it's really the value that is created more than how efficient we are doing this, but the effectiveness in, in our analysis and the, the, the experience that we have in working with organizations is most of the time calling for going deeper um, with strategic suppliers. And our recommendation is potentially start small and, um, you know, being successful there is, is going to be crucial. I was the other day, um, actually two days ago, with, an um, with a company that said, well, we struggle with a, a supplier uh, management program that we started, and, and we moved back to contract management because we were doing some things, and, we, and, and the comment was we would have liked to not to pick uh, some suppliers or to have, you know, selected some others, this, this would have helped us in the entire uh, program. Um, stakeholder alignment is understanding what is the operating model um, aligned to the different stakeholders in, in, in this activity is relevant, what are the roles, what are the process, um, what are the metrics. Um, I think we, we already talked about that. And efficiency is a challenge, so uh, appropriate tool support is required. Please don't forget that this is not about the tool, but once you have developed the entire, um, the entire model and the entire program, 
it might be very useful. And measuring value beyond cost reduction, it is a challenge, um, and therefore this creates some issues uh, with internal stakeholders and with suppliers, but, and, and also the point about not having the one metric for everybody um, is also a challenge, but it's worth to go this path and, and understanding what are the metrics that are really going to um, show the value that we are doing in, in a number of activities, including SRM. So with that, um, I want to open for questions. I don't know if, if there are any questions, Sharon, that uh, we have been receiving. I have, let me have a look. Okay, I have a question um, around um, segmentation criteria. Um, there are different methods on how to get there. Uh, obviously, financial value is, is, is one of them, um, but um, there are some other things such as uh, clearly the performance uh, that um, suppliers have, um, the impact, kind of the business criticality that um, that particular supplier might have, the impact in continuity, um, the role of the supplier in delivering, you know, your business objectives might be something that many cases uh, companies think that is a given, that is understood, but not, not necessarily is the case. Um, the alignment, you know, how they are uh, aligned with the company culture, that might be potentially one of the other areas that you might want to consider in, in uh, the supplier segmentation. I think I have time for one other question. Okay, I see one. Um, number, um, what is the, okay. And um, what type of metrics, the number of metrics to uh, be used to manage the relationship? Well, uh, with suppliers, I think, you know, we see a lot of um, metrics. Um, certainly, if I would create a couple of uh, buckets, there is something in operational performance, things such as the delivery, the quality, the compliance to the policies that you have. You know, for example, uh, something that I've seen quite a lot is you know, if, if it's electronic invoicing, is one of the, the, um, the policies, you know, are they complying to some of those type of things, more operational performance. There are some things around um, collaboration. You don't do this with everyone, but for example, sharing costs, sharing benefits, a uh, number of new ideas, um, you know, the responsiveness, and supplier satisfaction. I've seen uh, as well supplier satisfaction as one of the metrics. Um, there are some other type of metrics in terms of the, the impact in revenue, depending on the industry, depending on the relationship with your supplier, but for example, the target cost achieved might be one of them. Um, things around capacity lost um, or cost savings from sustainability, it really depends uh, on that. There are, there are many metrics. I think the most important is to be wise in the selection, which ones are really important for that particular supplier, for that particular relationship. Well, there are more questions that, that we um, have, but we are at the end of the um, hour. Um, I want to thank you everyone for joining. If you would like to have more information, please let me know. Uh, you have my contact details and uh, we're happy to help. Thank you, Melanie. That was a very insightful uh, presentation. And thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. We will be sharing a link to the recording along with the presentation slides in a couple of days. Thank you and have a nice day.